What is up everybody, it's Animac here for Anime Uproar, and today we will be talking about the walls in Attack on Titan, and the real reason why these three massive structures were built in the first place. At first, we are told that the walls exist as a way to protect the last remnants of humanity from the Titans, but we later learn that this is not the case, and the walls were built for an entirely different reason altogether. Not only that, but everything from the way that the walls were created to the names that were given to the walls, Maria, Rose, and Sheena, is deeply rooted in the secret history of the Eldian people. A history that humanity behind the walls didn't even know existed. In this video I will explain everything we know so far about the three giant walls and the real reason why they were built in the first place. I will also discuss all of the still unsolved mysteries about the walls, including how and why each wall got its name. Before we jump into it, I want to give a quick thank you to Black Desert for sponsoring this video. Black Desert is an online MMORPG that I've been playing for over 6 months, and I can say with confidence that it really stands out from the competition. You can build your own custom character from scratch. There are 18 diverse classes to choose from, and the character creation system is so detailed it's crazy. Black Desert includes real-time action-based combat, which includes fast-paced combos and diverse weapons and fighting styles that make Make it an epic gaming experience. The graphics are beautiful, don't take my word for it, you have to see it for yourself. And as a huge fan of fantasy, I was hooked right away. The game is constantly being updated and a brand new class, known as the Shy class, has just been introduced into the game. The Shy are adorable and they are the first class that excels in support abilities and life skills. The Shy use the Florang, a giant boomerang, as their main weapon of combat. And the small size of the Shy makes them very fast and nimble when evading and attacking enemies. This new class is a ton of fun to play. Try it out for yourself, just click the link in the description for a free 7 day trial and you'll see exactly why I love this game. Any player who reaches level 50 with the 7 day free trial will receive a game pass to play the game forever. If you enjoyed the Attack on Titan content on this channel and you want to see more, you can leave a like to let me know. And if you're new to Anime Uproar, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And in case you don't know, we are on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar, so give us a follow for all the latest updates. There will be some manga spoilers in this video about the walls, so please proceed with caution, you have been warned. After we learn the truth about Eren's basement and the world beyond the walls, we also get a glimpse at the hidden history of the walls and the Eldian people in general. Nearly 2000 years ago, an ancestor of the Eldians called Emir Fritz somehow gained the power of the Nine Titan Shifters. And she used that power to eventually form a great Eldian Empire that ruled over much of the world. After Ymir's death, the Nine Titan Shifter powers were held by various Eldian noble families, and these families used them to fight each other over power and influence. About 100 years prior to the beginning of the Attack on Titan story, the 145th Eldian King called Karl Fritz decided to abandon the continent that had been dominated by the Eldian Empire and he relocated as many Eldians as he could to the island of Paradis. There he used the founding titan power to construct the three walls called Maria, Rose and Sheena and he also used the titan power to erase all memories of the outside world from all the Eldians on the island. In this way, the 145th king isolated himself from all the war and suffering on the continent, allowing the Eldians that he took with him to live in relative peace. The king allegedly used millions of wall titans in order to construct the inner core of the three walls, and these titans are currently dormant because the titans need sunlight to function properly and the surface of the walls is preventing the titans from moving. The walls themselves are around 50 meters in height, and although they are very strong, it is possible to damage the surface of the walls as the female titan did when she was trying to climb wall Sheena. King Karl Fritz threatened the outside world that if anyone tried to interfere with the affairs of the island, he would release the millions of wall titans from within the walls and have them flatten the entire world. It is important to note that by some estimates, just over half a million wall titans total would be enough to fill the three walls. So it is possible that the claim that there are millions or tens of millions of wall titans is just an exaggeration designed to maximize the power of the king's threat. After King Karl Fritz abandoned the continent, 
the Eldian Empire collapsed and the continent was taken over by the rival nation of Marley. It was only after the walls were already constructed that the Marleans began oppressing the Eldians who remained on the continent, and as a form of punishment they would ship some of the Eldians off to the island of Paradis and use the Titan Serum to transform them into mindless titans. These mindless titans then began roaming around the outer edges of the island, and they were eventually encountered by anyone who ventured beyond Wall Maria. Because the 145th King used the Founding Titan's power to erase all memories of the outside world from the Eldians on the island, the people living behind the walls began to think that they were the only humans left alive in the world because the rest of humanity was destroyed by titans. Understandably, they also came to think that the reason that the walls were built in the first place was to keep the titans out even though the real reason was Carl Fritz's desire to isolate the island from the rest of the world. Over time, an entire religion developed around the walls themselves, and this church of the walls believed that the walls were a gift from God and had to be protected at all cost. However, the truth about the walls is far different from the religious doctrine promoted by the church. And everything goes back to the progenitor, Emir Fritz. The truth about Emir Fritz is difficult to know because we know at least two completely different versions. According to the Marleans, Emir Fritz made a deal with the devil, and she used the titan powers that the devil allegedly gave her in order to establish an oppressive and violent empire that conducted a campaign of ethnic cleansing against all rival nations. But according to the Eldian Restorationists, Emir Fritz's titan powers were a gift from God, and she was a just and benevolent ruler. She used her titan powers to build roads and bridges, and the Eldian Empire contributed a great deal to the progress of humanity as a whole. Now, according to what we've heard from both the Owl, Aaron Kruger, and Willie Tiber, the 145th King Carl Fritz seemed to believe that the Eldian Empire has played a largely negative role in human history. According to this version of the story, Carl Fritz felt terrible about all the bad things that his ancestors had done to other nations, and he made a vow of pacifism. He decided to move as many Eldians as he could behind the walls so that they could live in peace for as long as possible. But despite making the walls out of colossal titans and threatening to use them to destroy the world in case the island was attacked, King Fritz apparently never meant to carry out the threat. Again, according to this version of the story, King Fritz thought that if one day the Marlans or other nations decided to attack the island and destroy all the Eldians there, he still wouldn't fight back because the Eldians deserved this fate due to all the terrible things that they had done in their history. And this is what the 145th King's ideology allegedly amounts to, and this is why every member of the royal family who inherits the power of the founding titan instantly adopts the same pacifist view and refuses to leave the walls or help the Eldians on the continent. And this always happens no matter how badly the person in question wanted to change things before inheriting the power. But there's just one problem. It doesn't quite add up. In chapter 100, we learned from Willie Tiber that the three walls, Maria, Rose, and Sheena, were named after the three daughters of Ymir, the original Titan Shifter. We don't know much about these daughters, although we do appear to see them on a painted fresco during the closing credits of the second Attack on Titan anime season. The picture appears to show three young girls crying while consuming what appears to be human body parts. The girls are standing over what appears to be the skeleton of a woman, and it is my belief that this image depicts the death of Emir Fritz. The three girls are her daughters, Maria, Rose, and Sheena, and they are both grieving for their mother and seemingly consuming parts of her flesh, possibly her spinal fluid, in order to inherit her titan powers. So clearly these three daughters are important. The walls are named after them, we see an image of them in the second season closing credits, but we don't know anything about them, at least not yet. If the 145th King Carl Fritz really believed that the Eldian Empire was terrible and that its sins were so great that all Eldians deserved to be destroyed, then why name the three walls after the three daughters of Emir? If you think that Emir Fritz's legacy is a negative one, why honor her daughters by naming the walls after them? Especially when the people living within the walls don't even know about Emir Fritz anyway. The walls could have literally just been named Wall 1, Wall 2, and Wall 3, so I believe that there is a good reason why they were named after the daughters of Emir Fritz. Also, if Carl Fritz didn't actually intend to use the colossal titans within the walls, why create them in the first place? Assuming that there are really millions of titans within those walls, 
From everything we know so far, this would mean that millions of actual people sacrificed their lives in order to become those titans. Unless there is some other way to create a titan that we still don't know about, each one of these wall titans is presumably an Eldian human being. Why go through all that trouble if you never intended to use these titans and you were always going to just be a pacifist? Why not fill the walls with sand and just say that they are filled with titans? Since hardly anyone from the outside world ever reaches the walls of the island, they wouldn't know the difference between an empty threat and a real threat. I believe that the story we've been told about why Carl Fritz decided to build the walls in the first place may not be true, and that his pacifist ideology is not quite what we think. If you think back to the conversation that Grisha had with the owl Aaron Kruger, before Kruger passed the attack titan power on to Grisha, you will recall that Kruger told Grisha to complete his mission for the sake of Armin and Mikasa. Kruger said this despite not even knowing who Armin and Mikasa are, and of course he couldn't have known because they hadn't even been born yet. We know that titan shifters, after they inherit one of the nine titan powers, are able to see the memories of the previous shifters who were in possession of that same titan power. Which is why Eren is able to see Grisha's memories of his conversation with Eren Kruger in the first place. But could it be that inheriting a titan power not only allows you to see memories of past titan shifters, but it also allows you to gain glimpses of the future through the memories of future titan shifters who will hold the same power as you hold now, but sometime later. After all, we know that all Eldians are connected through mysterious paths that transcend physical space, and this is what allows Eldians to become titans. And it is also what allows the founding titan to manipulate the memories of all Eldians. But what if these paths don't only transcend space, but time as well? The first chapter of the manga and the first episode of the anime are named to you 2000 years from now. It is as if Emir Fritz, who lived some 2000 years ago, is addressing someone in the present time. We know that when members of the same family inherit titan powers from each other, those memories will be clearer than memories that would appear if someone inherits a titan power from a complete stranger. This is why Eren has fairly easy access to Grisha's memories, but it's not so easy when it comes to the memories of previous titan shifters. We also know that royal blood gives the titan user special abilities and greater control of his titan powers. And we know that the founding titan power has been passed on from generation to generation within the same royal Fritz family for 2000 years. So if Eren Kruger could see a brief glimpse of the future by accessing Eren Jaeger's future memories of Mikasa and Armin, isn't it possible that the 145th king Karl Fritz who had royal blood and access to the memories of all of his ancestors, saw an even clearer glimpse of a more distant future. In more recent chapters, we have learned that beyond the walls, most of the world hates Eldians because Marley has been using them to fight their wars for them. There is talk of taking away all human rights from Eldians because their ability to turn into titans makes other nations see them as inherently dangerous. At the same time, we know that beyond the walls, modern weaponry is advancing rapidly. Weapons are already capable of piercing the armored titan's armor, and soon titan powers will become irrelevant in the face of modern military technology and weaponry. What if the 145th king saw a glimpse of the future, and he knew that this would happen, and that once titan powers were no longer effective in warfare, Marley and the rest of the world would decide that the Eldians are no longer needed? And since their human rights are being taken away, they would eventually all be eliminated so that their titan powers can never pose a threat to anyone else. What if Carl Fritz saw a vision of the future in which the Eldian people faced extinction at the hands of the other nations, and he decided that the only way to save at least a portion of the Eldian nation is to isolate it on the island of Paradis, behind the three walls. That way, even if all the Eldians on the continent are eliminated, at least a portion of the Eldian nation will survive on the island of Paradis. This would explain why Carl Fritz actually created all those colossal titans. It was not an empty threat. It was an insurance policy in order to make sure that the cost of invading the island would be far greater than any potential reward. This would also explain why Carl Fritz named the three walls after the three daughters of Ymir. He did not think that Eldian history was sinful and shameful, and he did not think that the Eldians deserved to die because of the sins of their ancestors. Rather, he respected Eldian history, he honored the daughters of Ymir by naming the walls after them, and his main goal was to preserve as many Eldians as possible. This would also explain the 145th king's ideology, and why every member of the royal family who inherited the founding titan decided not to venture beyond the walls and not to help the Eldians on the continent. 
Every holder of the founding titan inherits the vision of the future that Carl Fritz saw. And they realized that if they allowed the Eldians on the island to go beyond the walls and get involved into the politics of the outside world, this will inevitably lead to a world war that will bring about the destruction of all the Eldians. So, in order to preserve at least a portion of the Eldian population, each holder of the founding titan is prepared to sacrifice the other Eldians on the continent. This also explains why Carl Fritz erased the memories of the outside world from every Eldian behind the walls. By erasing their memories of the outside world, Carl Fritz took away much of the temptation for Eldians behind the walls to try to leave. As they began to believe that there was nothing outside the walls except for deadly titans, the Eldians behind the walls had very little motivation to learn about the outside world and get involved in its affairs, which made it less likely that the Eldians on the island would become involved in a war with the rest of the world that would ultimately lead to their destruction. Carl Fritz wasn't a pacifist because he believed that the Eldians deserved to perish due to the sins of their ancestors. He was a pacifist because he believed that the only way to save at least a portion of the Eldian nation from the wrath of rival nations was to isolate them and make it too costly for anyone on the outside to interfere in their affairs. All the subsequent founding titan holders saw things the same way because they knew that the Eldians had no future if they actively took on the rest of the world. And because resources on the island are limited and because trying to help the Eldians on the continent would lead to a massive war with Marley and potentially other nations as well, every royal holder of the founding titan power decided to abandon the other Eldians and remain as isolated from the outside world as possible. They made this difficult decision for the sake of preventing their own nation, the Eldians, from going extinct. Let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with my theory that Carl Fritz built the walls because he saw visions of the future, which told him that unless he builds the walls and seals a segment of the Eldian population behind him, the entire Eldian nation would eventually be exterminated by rival nations using modern weapons that surpass the power of the Titans? And if you don't agree, why do you think that he built the walls? Why do you think that real Titans were used to make the walls instead of simply bluffing about the whole situation if pacifism was really the king's true intention? And why do you think that he named the walls after the three daughters of Ymir if the king allegedly resented the legacy of Ymir Fritz and the Eldian Empire? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like to let me know. And if you're new to Anime Uproar, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. A huge thank you to all of our Anime Uproar patrons for supporting our work. I want to give a special thank you to our Pro Hero tier patrons, including the one and only Gilgamesh, Chubbs is the man, and nothing but a fan. And another huge thank you to our The One tier patrons, the ones who stand above all other clans, including Baby Ray, Ace, Ingrata, Alolan Adam, Matty Mac, and Michael Calderon. If you guys feel that our content provides value for you and you want to support more, be sure to check out our Patreon link in the description. Even donating a single dollar will give you access to our Anime Uproar patron exclusive Discord and your name will appear in our videos along with these amazing people. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And until next time, see ya space cowboys.